So software testing as a conceptual field is about ensuring a couple things. One of them is that what you expected the software to do when you dreamed it up, the software actually does. But also the other aspect of the software, such as usability and performance, and that also conforms to the expectations. So testing in general is the process by which we decide something's acceptable. In the real world, uh, with physical things, if you're cooking dinner, you test taste it. You, you know, take a little spoon and you make sure there's enough salt or it's not too sweet or not too spicy. Um, and if you watch cooking shows, which I do uh, frequently and, and enjoy them, you know, it, when, test, when chefs don't test their stuff, they tend to get in trouble with it. Um, you know, if you buy fancy clothes, you'll have a little tag in it that says inspected by. Um, you know, th mostly they have machines and people that know what they're doing. It doesn't mean we don't stop and check it out, make sure they didn't miss something. It's not that we don't trust the individuals to do good work or the machines to do good work. It's just that sometimes bad things happen and we take a look at it before we release them out there. Um, even to the point where if we buy a car, I want to get, typically get in the car I'm about to purchase and drive that specific car down the road and make sure that specific car makes me happy. Um, it's not necessarily even, again, that I think that that car is going to break down, um, particularly not in the few blocks I drive around. It's just, does that make me happy? Does it fit my needs as a user? There's all different types of testing we could talk about. Um, the interesting thing is software doesn't ever wear down. If you've used the software one place, it tends to be the exact same software and it runs the same every place. But testing it is still super important because of the many different types of testing that come up. Now, often testing is something that's done as you build it up. When you taste test something, you're still cooking it. Uh, it's not like I wait until the very end to serve it. I am going to taste test that all the way through. Formal testing, though, the stuff we're talking about in this class is something that happens as an explicit step to check out, is this application acceptable to be able to give to the general public or our internal customers or just in general, is it something that I feel confident is going to do the job I needed to do for me? And that's where we start that doneness phase. Uh, so everything that the developer does to make sure things are working doesn't count when we're talking about software testing here. Now, often we will go further than just saying that there's a separate step involved. We'll actually it's often have separate people involved. As, as we said before, it's not just because we don't trust the integrity of the person doing the work. It's also to get that separate viewpoint at it. Um, if you, you know, you've written a paper, sometimes you'll hand it to somebody else and they'll find a misspelling and you'll be like, how did I possibly do that? Well, it's because you're too close to the material. You know what you're expecting. You know what you think is supposed to be happening there. And that's where another viewpoint comes in. They can give us different views at a project to give us ideas that we might not have thought of on our own. And then there's nothing to say that any individual is bad for not having that perspective. That's just the way the brain works. Our brain is very accustomed to what it's expecting to see based off of our history and, and, and our the, you know, how we've been thinking about, in this case, software. And somebody else comes in, they, they can see it in an entirely different way. Um, so it gives us a, a certain integrity as you know, maybe you know, ensure that if somebody was tempted to cheat, they won't do that. Um, it also gives us that second viewpoint. And then it has specific financial and schedule gains for the project as well, uh, because I can have people working on things in parallel, and I can use the uh, most expensive, most uh, in-demand folks to do the things that um, are their best thing to do that other people just simply can't do. So formal testing then is more than just saying, we are now dressing up fancy and doing formal testing. Um, it will help, what I hope to show you in this class is it's not just having somebody else do the testing, but it's something that has multiple phases that we document and we can repeatedly go back and perform again and again. And we can audit that to know not only did we do this testing, but we know the results of the testing can be verified, verified have repeatability, and that we haven't just gotten lucky. Um, we didn't just happen to catch stuff that worked one time, but we know that it will work every time. Um, that's going, you know, when we go through and use our our, our, our solution. 
So we'll talk about much of this stuff in detail later, but testing comes through multiple layers. You may be familiar with some of these terms already. It might be terms that are new to you at this point, but each of these different types of testing are a category of testing that we will learn more about that is applied at different phases. Now, in these categories, there's all sorts of approaches and techniques that might actually be common. Later on, we'll talk about white box and black box testing. These are not categorized by, oh, this one's white box, this one's black box, that we can say one's all one, all the others. Both of those white box and black box approaches are techniques that can be used within each of these testing phases. Um, you know, unit testing is probably 90% white box testing, but there are some aspects that we want to do it within black box testing. Um, there's reasons that we would make that approach. We'll learn more about those later on. But the unit testing is where we're really looking at the details of the system. Where when we're looking at user acceptance, we don't care about you know, where data is stored on files or databases or things like that. We just want to know that you know, when I deposit a check, it ends up in my bank. Yeah, that, that's, that's the type of thing that we're worried about there. So these different phases of testing will come back to uh, make up the big layer cake that is testing. And a layer cake, the more layers you put on it, clearly the bigger and better and tastier it's going to be. Well, in testing cases, the more thorough, um, the more systematic, and, and the more um, verified our system is going to be. And so those layers get put together through the process that we're going to define for how we plan to test. There is no uniform singular testing process. Um, you probably learned by now all software processes are customized towards the needs and, and you know different aspects of a software project. Testing even more so because the way I would test, say, a website is going to be different than how I would test a mobile application, which would be way different than I test a mobile application that runs on your car. Um, you know, if a website, you know, the assumption generally speaking is you're sitting someplace with a keyboard and mouse and you're, you're interacting through a computer. A mobile website, well, there's different features available to you. Um, if I want to know your location, I can get that by just asking the phone in, in some interesting way. Um, but then I also have to deal with the fact that it's a much smaller screen and I don't have all the conventions of being able to scroll around that screen because I'm dealing with touch instead of mouse and keyboard. Where if I'm dealing with a car, there's certain things I don't want to do because I don't want to distract you as a driver. I want to make sure that thing is safe. So we got to consider each of those different aspects when we're planning our testing. And then really, how do how do we get to the testing? It's, it's a lot easier to tweak the back end of, say, a, a, a website than, you know, on, the, on a server than it is the back end of a car um, that might be out there driving and moving and things like that. So our testing plan should be a step-by-step -step guide to how do we how do we go through and validate our solution. The whole idea of a testing plan is to communicate to other people who will participate in the project how we plan to do our testing. So think about that right now, right, right, right up front. Think about as you're building a testing plan, it's not something you're documenting for yourself. It's not something that's you're documenting for me even. It's something you're documenting for people who do, do know testing. It's professionals. It's not just any fool off the street. But it's supposed to be a plan where when I hand that to you, you can execute that without having to come back to me every day to say, well, what did you mean by that? Um, it should be within reason, using the terminology of testing, something that people can do independently and validate independently and be able to come up with um, you know, a, a repeatable approach to validating a system.